Twist in Time, Chapter 27, The Queen's Daughter Yawaraya's eyes open as the sun rays beat down upon her as she uses her metallic hand to shield them, grunting. Mother, sun's up, get up. The feline kitten jumps on the bed of her parents. Five more minutes. Go back to bed. The queen tries to wave off the pesky kitten. But you promised to show me the ruins today. Miaraya's pupils grow as her lip trembles. To the queen's utter disappointment, I can feel you staring at me. It's not even six o'clock in the morning, Miaraya. Her mother groans, covering her head with a pillow. But you said, and I quote, I will take you to see the ruins at the crack of dawn. The impatient teen mocks her mother's voice in protest. Now come on! Miara whines, pulling at the queen's feet, trying to knock her mother onto the floor. Adora groans. Miara, let us sleep for a little longer. And you said having kids would make us happier. I'm getting gray hairs already, and I'm not even 40. I blame you, Adora. Catch her groans from under the pillows. Yeah, well, tch. she's a magic cat like all the others there, and your kid. Adora mumbles under her breath. Ahem, ruins mother. Miorai's voice shows the slightest sense of annoyance as she continues to pull at her mother's feet. Pulling the protesting queen off the bed, making her fall on the floor. Ugh! Alright, alright. Already get him up! Catch our yawns, rubbing her sore backside from the fall. Luckily for her, the heap of pillows had taken much of the impact of the fall. About time you got up, mother. Miaraya looks away, sticking her nose in the air in the typical teenage girl manner. You know what? The queen doesn't dare finish the sentence she was thinking in her head. Her daughter just looks at her with an arched brow, foot tapping on the floor as her sharp black nails click on the floor repeatedly. The queen gets up, dusts herself off, and leaves the room to change. Half Moon was still under the rule of the horde, so they had to stay elsewhere for the time being. Queen Glimmer lets the family stay in Adora's old room in Castle Bright Moon. Mother and daughter had to be careful not to get recaptured as the ruins of the old kingdom were just outside the Horde's doorstep. The two magic cats used their feline-like reflexes to sneak past the Bright Moon Guards, as Glimmer had advised the night before that everyone should stay in the confines of her castle. Sadly, her mother, Queen Angela, had perished in one of the battles with an enemy, making Glimmer sole heir to the throne. Catra carries her daughter on her back for most of the trip, as the princess had grown tired, yet her mother was now very much awake since the prior intrusion of her sleep. During the morning only hours ago, while Miaura's body wasn't that heavy, being that she only weighed 60 to 70 pounds at least, and 80 to 90 at most, she was by far a little too big to be carried by her mother. Magic cats, as a species, a rather ancient one at that, didn't age as fast as your typical human of Etheria. For every 10 to 15 human years, the felines age half as fast. If Mariah had been born human, she would have well been into her 20s by now. So life for this species was bliss when it came down to the whole aging process. 
Are we there yet? Miyaraya's eyes open and she yawns. No, Miyarayakta, we are not. And will you kindly stop taking your claws into my bag? Katra replies in a sultry manner. Huh? Oh, sorry, mother. The kitten blushes as she releases her grip on the queen's shirt. You know you don't have to address me as mother. You could simply call me mom or mama. Katra looks over her shoulder at the wide-eyed, freckled girl on her back. But I call the other parent mom. It gets so confusing. Having two moms, you know. That right? Mariah's purse into the queen's ears, calming the queen. I am aware. So why not just call me mama then? Or mama cat? Hmm. How does that sound, my rambunctious little feline? Catra smiles wide, but she can't help but chuckle at her daughter's very true statement. Sounds like a plan to me, Mama Cat. <laughs> Mariah's purrs turn into a chuckle as she continues to hold on for dear life, her mother racing in the treetops of the woods. Catra rolls her eyes playfully. What am I going to do with you, kid? I don't know. Take me to see the ruins? Yoraya's throat makes a purring sound once more as her black people stylate further. The queen just chuckles, shaking her head as she continues to run on all fours in a cat-like fashion. Once at the edge of the whispering woods, it is nearly dinner time for that half of the planet. So right on schedule, the two magic cats stop to hunt, eat, and rest for a little while. Yoraya's tiny body in the protective arms of her mother. Meanwhile, back at Bright Moon had a little problem. Well, actually make that a big problem, since a troop of horde soldiers had marched onto Bright Moon territory. Shira and the rest of the rebels tried to fend off the small battalion of soldiers only for Shira to be captured once more, her sword along with her. I would say welcome back to the fright zone, Adora, but I have more important matters to attend to. Hordak grins, wicked as ever. Take Shira and the sword to the machine. It is time to open the portal so that I can prove my brother that I'm still worthy to stand by his side. Do it now! Force Captain Lonnie nods as she walks with the prisoner, hooking up the Great Rebellion fighter to the machine. The sword begins to glow as the ground shakes, it flying into the air. It was the next morning, or morning for Half Moon, and the rest of that half of the planet, when Katra and her daughter finally make it to the ruins. Something was very off. Both felines could sense something was very wrong. There was something very wrong about to happen, or was happening, back in the Fright Zone indeed.